Thank you guys. I feel the energy. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you for tuning into the Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and we have an amazing show for you guys tonight. I pray that you guys are having a great week so far. I pray that you guys are being safe and sanitized during this pandemic. For those of you who may not be aware, the, perfect of, the purpose of this platform is for us to inspire, motivate, and uplift those aspiring entrepreneurs as well as entrepreneurs. So we are glad to have you guys. So we have an amazing show lined up for you guys. Um, before I go on with the show, there's a special, there's some special thanks that I would like to give to my sponsors. First of all, I wanna give a special thanks to Luther Catering Company. They're gonna be responsible for providing the nutritious meal that you guys will be receiving after the show. Secondly, I would love to give a special thanks to my makeup artist, Miss Amber Singletary. Also, I would love to give a special thanks to my photographer, Mr. Steven Tucker, my executive producer who's doing an amazing job. He's writing for me. He's making it possible so that the Shelly Roy Show can be what it is. And then last but not least, I want to thank you broadcast media. So again, guys, we have an amazing packed show for you guys tonight. We have Mr. Brandon Woolen, Miss Jill Sturge, and Mr. Steve Roy. They'll be up after the break, after this short commercial.
you so much. I love you guys' energy. Welcome back to the Shelly Roy Show, guys. My first guest is CEO and founder of Assist to Sport. It's a sport and apparel line. So you guys help me welcome my first guest, Mr. Brandon Woolen. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Welcome. Thank you, I appreciate it. Welcome. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you. Same here. So before we get started, how are you and your family doing during this pandemic? Are you guys being safe and uh, sanitized? Yeah, we, we definitely being uh, safe and sanitized. It, it gave us a lot of time to love up on each other with Absolutely. the kids being out of school. Absolutely. Um, everyone's safe. Um, you know, we're very fortunate. It's a lot of people that haven't been fortunate with their with their lives and Absolutely. so on. So, you know, we uh, give thanks every day, you know, for, Absolutely. for life and being healthy and not you know, having anyone actually, you know, pass from my family, so on and so forth. I agree. I agree. I second that. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm myself as well. We're being safe and sanitized, but um, right. COVID has taught us all something, right, guys? It's yeah. taught us some patience. Patience. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. So it's yep. definitely given us an opportunity to hit the reset button. Exactly. And like you said, love up on our family. Yep. So um, before we get into a little bit more about yourself and your business and mm -hmm. the purpose of your business, for myself and for the viewers that are here, give us a a little bit about where you're from and where you grew up. I, I grew up in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. Okay, um, DMV. You know, in the DMV, okay. for sure. Um, big fan of the DMV. Absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Maryland. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah, uh, Delray. Um, I actually uh, I had the pleasure of uh, uh, living in some different areas um, throughout Alexandria. Okay. Um, so Delray, the West Side, uh, town, you know, so I'm, I'm an Alexandria guy uh, to it. the heart. Okay. Um, but love the whole DMV. I've spent some time in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, public not? schools as well. Yeah. And uh, Maryland as well. So okay. just a DMV guy. Yeah, it sure. pays to be well rounded. Yeah. Went to T.C. Sure. Williams. There so you remember, go. Remember, remember the Titans. Yeah, yeah remember yeah. the Titans. <laughs> yeah. So um, um, rest in peace to the great Henry Boone. Absolutely. Um, you Absolutely. know, uh, I'm glad that he got a, a chance to highlight um, our high school in, in that, that manner. That was dope. Yeah, that's, that's it was real dope. Film. Yeah epic film. Yeah. Um, so before we get into your business, um, give me an idea about when you decided that you wanted to be an entrepreneur and what, what was that mindset like? I'm, I'm going to be honest, like I knew it from a very young age. Good. Um, like uh, me and my friend Daryl Monroe would be in Delray and we would set up a, a car wash with bikes or yeah. we would set up a barber shop in his basement or my basement. We were always doing something to where we were like structuring businesses for our friends That's to, dope. you know, a service for our friends. And uh, so I knew from a very young age, That's um, good. I tried to, you know, the nine to five, but I, it, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like to have a ceiling on uh, like my worth. Yeah. So Absolutely. I, I have to be able to write my own check every Absolutely. day. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the entrepreneurs. You guys can relate out there, right? <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so tell us a little bit about your business and the products and services that you have. Um, I was doing a little bit of research and yeah. I saw that you're in the high schools and the colleges. You yeah. actually do like the sports jerseys. Just yeah. give us a little bit of more information yeah. about your company. Yeah. So I, I looked at it, um, an opportunity. Uh, Naeem is a guy that I ran into. I was actually doing a sister score, student athlete and uh, like where we would take kids and teach them life skills and get nice. them into school, so on That's and so important. forth. Um, a Muslim guy, Naeem, came and uh, we talked and he, he just asked me a question one day. He was like, have you ever thought about having your own balls um, for mm. your program? And I thought it was far-fetched. Yeah. Um, a little while there, I was like, yeah, that's kind of expensive. I just kind of want to, you know, and uh, we set at a Dunkin' Donuts. And, um, That's where most businesses take yeah, place. Yeah, over a there, cup of coffee, and, you know, yeah. very modest uh, date, you know, yeah. a few guys. And he actually had a guy with him there uh, that Adidas had just gave $10 million to his factory ah. to produce soccer balls. Okay. He didn't speak a lick of English, and I didn't speak their language. Naeem was sort of the bridge between us. Got it. And uh, he sort of gave me the idea. I always had a knack for fashion mm -hmm. and clothing growing up with all sisters. Yeah, um, okay. 
And uh, sports, I played ball since I was seven and had a chance to, uh, you know, play uh, on a high level, went overseas and played, um, you know, got an education, you know, dribbling that ball. And it took That's me, dope. you know, to some other countries, so on and so forth. So when I was able to bridge the two together, mm -hmm. it was like a match made in heaven for the last like nine and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's always good to give back to the community also. Of course. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, give me an idea of what are some of your success habits. What would you consider to be some of your success habits? Success habits for me is like for the first two years of my business, I didn't sleep. Ah. Um, once it started going, Grind it, yeah, it was, it was just, yeah. it was flowing out of me at a rate that I talked to my uh, big mama. Uh, which is my wife's grandmother. Okay. And I was like, you know, I just want to. Is she still with us? Yes, yes, okay. yes. She's okay. alive and well, beautiful. She's gotcha. in uh, uh, Sink and Spring, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, I called her one day and I just was like, how do I turn this off? Because mm. the ideas were coming so fast. It you was like, it kept going and going. Off. And she told me <laughs> something that I never forget. She said, to get some sleep, baby. Just like stare at your big toe. She told me, stare at your big toe. And I still, I still use that method to this day when I just need to yeah. relax. Okay. So I got to keep my feet done Okay. So <laughs> with that method. Help myself and the, the audience with that visual. So you stare at your big toe and then it the, relaxes. Lay, lay in a nice, comfortable bed with white sheets, white pillows, a, a high <laughs> <laughs> headboard, and put your feet up okay. and just stare at your toe. Okay. That's what she told me to do. And it's work. It helped and me get working. rest. And it's working. Yes. Okay. That's what's up. I might have to uh, stir up my big toe. Yeah. Another, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> another success habit um, is, like, don't listen to the naysayers. No. Like, I've never been the type that um, actually do that. Um, I am who I am. And uh, it's like, I believe in you make your own bed, you lie in it. Absolutely. And I want to sleep comfortable. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Exercise, I think exercise is good. It like, is good. have something to, to go to, and I surround myself around um, a lot of, you know, That's um, important. Like good people, people who inspire me. Yeah, because I can find myself being a generator to where people will connect to me, and I give all my energy out. Yeah, I had to learn to have success. You have to have a group of people that you can also plug into. Absolutely. So that was me. Absolutely. Yeah. Give it up for Mr. Brandon. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, I That's dope. It. And then also, as an entrepreneur, everyone doesn't have your vision. Right. right. So you definitely have to surround yourself with like-minded people. Exactly. So yep. that's that's super awesome. Yeah. Um, last but not least, what advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs? Um, I would say like it's not going to be easy. Definitely. Um, it's just not going to be easy. Um, an entrepreneur is like. Just to use an analogy, um, so you're you're like really sailing across water, mm -hmm. and sometimes that water is going to be rocky. It's going to be thunderstorms. Um, you're going to have to do a lot. You might get a hole in your boat. It might start sinking. It might feel that way. Um, I think the strongest thing is just to have faith and belief in yourself. Is the main number one Absolutely. thing if you're going to set out to do this type of uh, life. Absolutely, yeah. I agree for sure. Yeah. Um, so. Tell the audience and everyone that's listening, how can they get in touch with you? What's your social media handles? What's your website? It's all you. Okay. Um, uh, you can find us on uh, Instagram at, at assist the score. That's A-S-S-I-S-T, -S -S the number two, uh, score, S-C-O-R-E. Uh, assist, that's assist the score, mm -hmm. at assist the score. Um, the website would be www.assisttoscore.com, um, Facebook would be uh, assist the score merchandise and apparel awesome that phone number is 1-800-684-1939 yeah give it all to him you guys <laughs> give it up for mr brandon Williams. <laughs> thank you guys we'll be back we'll go to a quick commercial break guys
Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk in, mall, super no. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk in, mall, super no. Anything less is unacceptable. this energy. I have the best audience, guys. Yes. Give it up for my audience, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you too, guys. Welcome back to the Shelly Roy Show, guys. I am still here with my guest, Mr. Brandon Rulin. So, Brandon, tell us about your upcoming events that you have going on. We, we have an event right now, me and Tamara Young. Uh, from the Las Vegas uh, uh, WNBA basketball team. Nice. Uh, she's a really good friend of mine. Um, Do your thing. She, yeah, yeah, Do thank you. Thing. She's been yeah. featured on uh, uh, Love and Hip Hop and some different shows. So. Um, oh, that's a young yeah. lady that uh, Mimi is engaged to. Right, nice. exactly. Yep. Okay. She's, she's like a sister to me. Congrats. And uh, we, we'll be headed to Austin, Texas um, on Saturday uh, to give back to some kids. Uh, through some uh, athletics and a charity game that we're doing out there. That's gonna so be the, dope. Yeah, that's the most up, up. That's the upcoming event that that we'll be having together. So okay. I'm looking forward to working with her. That's on gonna that. be so dope. Safe travels yeah, to you, you both. You. Safe yeah, travels yeah, to you both. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and before I got out of here, um, I wanted to. Uh, I brought you a gift. Oh, this is a for me. For a bag. Um, I I kind of saw that you. Uh, Worked out a little yeah, bit. I do. And Every we day. Have a, uh, we Five, have a, six days a week. Uh, we have a workout line as well, so I think you'll yeah. look good in there. Ah! <laughs> yeah. This is me. Yeah. This is me, guys. <laughs> All day. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. This is me. I appreciate me. it so Thank much. You so Thank, much. You. And this is yours too. Thank you so much. You guys give it up for Mr. Brandon Woolen. Thank you. Taking a quick break. Woo! The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show.
I love it. The energy is amazing. Welcome back, guys, to the Shelly Roy Show. My next guest is a stage three ca breast cancer survivor. You guys help me welcome Miss Jill Sturge. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Jill. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Definitely. Um, so I know you're going to help us with providing some breast cancer awareness and early detection. But before we jump into that, um, give us a little bit of insight as to where you grew up and where you're from. Well, actually, I'm so excited because Brandon and I are school box friends. Wow. We both grew up in Del Delray, Alexandria, Virginia. Wow. So okay. Give it up for Delray, guys. <laughs> Woo! Give it up for Delray. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Um, so let's jump right into it because this is a um, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, guys. So this is an important segment. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, talk to me a little bit about your experience with battling breast cancer before and after COVID? Uh, well, originally I was diagnosed with um, stage three triple negative breast cancer uh, two years ago, July 2018. Okay. Um, there was no family or genetic history. Um, wow. And I actually found the lumps wow. on, on my own. Um, at that time, I was only 43. Wow. And so I did not qualify for to get a mammogram. At that time, it was 45 years old. Wow, okay, so let's take a step back. Explain to me what the triple, explain to myself, the audience and the viewers, what the triple negative, what, what does that mean? So are you cancer free now or what, what does that mean? I'm always reluctant using the word cancer free, but okay. I would just say that I feel like I've won the battle. Absolutely, you have. Uh -huh. You're still standing, you're here today. You are. Give it up for Ms. Jill Serge, guys. Yes, you are. Thank Definitely. You. There are four phases uh, or four stages okay. of, of breast cancer, and I had stage three. Okay. Um, and then the triple negative is one of the most severe breast cancer that is out of all the breast cancers that exist. Wow. Um, it's the most aggressive. Wow. And it is the form of breast cancer that you find in African-American women under the age of 40. Wow. So not only did you find it yourself, you weren't of age to get the proper testing that you needed, and then you had the most severe kind of breast cancer. Wow. You're a walking testimony, honestly. Thank you so much. You really are. I appreciate you sharing your story with us. Um, so talk to, a little bit to me about early detection and the key to making sure that you examine your breasts the proper way, the proper timing of when all of that should take place. Kind of educate us on how that should take place. Well, the two ways to kind of, um, I would say, 
overcome this battle or to really make sure that you're aware mm -hmm. of your body. Um, you yeah. should be self-examining yourself, and this goes for men and women on a uh, monthly basis. Okay. On a monthly basis. And for women, you should be scheduling your annual mammogram. Right. Right. to make sure that you're being tested every year just to make sure. And there are a lot of things that are changing within the medical community. Mm -hmm. So if you're unsure, just call your gynecologist. Yeah. And just say, you know, I'm interested in getting a mammogram. Yeah. Can I schedule a mammogram? And they'll let you know, depending on your insurance and so forth, you know, whether or not you can schedule a mammogram. Yeah. No, that's a good point that you made in terms of, being aware of your body and being in tune with your body because I too try to do it on a monthly basis but sometimes I fall short and um, in my mind it all feels the same like we have that breast lumpy tissue in our breast and to me it all kind of feels lumpy mm -hmm. so like you said that's key kind of being in tune with your body and just going from there so that's that's very important there are other areas as well outside of when you're um, ex examining your breasts, you should be looking for redness in the breast area. Okay. Um, you should be looking for rippling or uh, dimpling okay. in that area, any type of discharge in the nipple area. Wow. So okay. there are other things outside of the lump. So some women yeah. say that they see those, uh, those symptoms actually before they feel the lump itself. Wow, and that's definitely a red flag, I would think. Yes. You know, before you actually felt like the lumps and things of that nature. So um, is there like a certain kind of way that you do it? Is yeah, there let's, like- Yeah, well, let's get everyone involved in it, so. Would you guys be okay with that? <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. okay. So I want everyone to basically lift up your left arm, and then you're gonna take the, your four fingers here, and then I want you to place it on the outside of the left of the breast. And I want you to pretend like you're either playing a piano or a guitar. And ah. you just want to be doing like this as you go around. Because ah. what that does, by lifting up your arm, uh -huh. it, you know, you can really feel the lump. Okay. It's more pronounced when you actually lift up the arm. And you should do this either sitting or standing. Okay. And it really helps. And this goes for men and for women. So for everyone who's watching the show tonight with your partner, yeah. um, definitely have a little fun and play a little guitar or Michael Buble. Yeah, I, I, I like how you <laughs> phrase that. It's like playing a guitar. Yes. You know, then it's not really that intimidating. It's not as scary. You know what I mean? But just like you said, just making sure that you're in tune with yourself and with your body. So that's that's very helpful. So we're going to go to a quick commercial break, and then we'll be back more with Miss Jill Sturge. Thank you, guys. To the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk, and multipreneur. Anything less is unacceptable.
Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Ball talk, fashion walk, and ball super no. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Ball talk, fashion walk, and ball super no. Anything less is unacceptable. guys I received that you guys are the best audience so welcome back to the Shelly Roy show guys I am still here with stage three breast cancer survivor miss B miss Jill Sturge give it up for miss Jill Sturge you guys um, so I know we talked a little bit about um, this being the most severe type of breast cancer and I know we talked a little bit about um, you being the only one in your family with this type of disease. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you discovered the lump, like what actually happened. Um, well, I'm an events coordinator okay. and um, it was, like I said, I was diagnosed July 28, 2018. And that's normally my busy season, planning events wow. and, and receptions and so forth. And I came home late that evening, took off mm. my bra, and wow. um, just was rubbing my hands along the outer um, bands of my right breast, and I felt a lump. And at that time, I was not sure what it was. Right. So yeah. I had um, my mother to come in the room and actually and it, feel it as well. Um, being that my family is from the Caribbean islands, Trinidad, Tobago. Okay, <laughs> so <Trinidad>, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. She initially was like, Jill, this could be a cyst. Uh, and, so she uh, was spot on. So I was just kind of like, Mom, I don't know. And we just, as a family, made the decision to contact my gynecologist um, the next day. And um, that was the beginning of this two-year journey. Well, it's a good thing that you guys jumped on it as soon as you felt something was off, as soon as you realized that something didn't feel right. Because oftentimes, like you said, even in that moment of uncertainty, we still kind of just sit and wait it out to see if it goes away or, you know, to see what, what if happened. So it's a good thing that you guys detected it early and then executed and followed up with your doctor. So that's that's very important. Yeah, it was definitely, I was very grateful that I did follow up mm -hmm. um, the next morning because when I touched that outer band again, I felt two other lumps. So wow. it was a total of three. And when I was diagnosed with triple negative, what they explained to me is what makes it the most severe mm. is that it, by the time you're probably diagnosed, it's already spread to other areas of the body. Wow. So at that point, it had already spread to the lymph nodes underneath my right arm. Wow. Wow. Thank God you're still standing. You're an amazing testimony. Yes. Amazing testimony, isn't you guys? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so what procedures did you do to get rid of the breast cancer? Well, it's been a two-year journey. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I did um, 16 rounds of chemotherapy. 
Wow. I know that was tough. That was tough because I still maintained um, working. Wow. Um, I also You're working full time? I was working full time. Wow, that's a lot. You're commendable. <laughs> yeah, give it up for her, guys. Amazing. Courage, strength, all of those things. And Definitely. I'm an entrepreneur as well. So I was also running um, a business um, during that time. So I, I did 16 rounds of chemotherapy. Um, wow. I had. Um, I chose to have a right mastectomy, and a right mastectomy is wow. the actual removal, complete removal of the breast itself. Wow. Um, I had the option to do a lump, lumpectomy, which is just the removal of the lump, the tissue itself. Ah. But being that once I did my own research um, and found out how aggressive triple negative breast cancer is, it was I best didn't, to just remove I it. felt like it yeah. was the best thing was to remove it. Right. Um, and after my surgery, there was some little healing time and then I went straight into um, radiation. And wow. I did um, 25 rounds of radiation. Wow. And that required um, five weeks of Monday through Friday going every day. So I would work from wow. nine to two and then do and then drive to Virginia Hospital Center and do radiation and then commute home. Wow. Faith is strong. Yes. Your support system was very strong, very courageous for sure. Um, now this is somewhat of a sensitive question, but um, I'm sure we all who have ever been sick, not just faced with cancer or terminal illness, um, sometimes we have, you know, our futures like spot right before our eyes. And so it kind of puts us in a place where we have to kind of think about the future and the what if. So were you ever afraid of dying? I was never afraid of dying. Okay. I was so determined Amen. to kick cancer's butt. Yes. <laughs> Give it up for her, guys. Yes. Yes, I love it. I love it. Because I, I felt like I had too many people. So many things to live for. So many things to live for. And so many people that were depending on me. And I wanted to be an inspiration you and motivation to other people that you know, breast cancer or any form, any disease or situation, or even during this COVID. Absolutely. And God, yeah. You know, sometimes you just have to put your head down, say a prayer to God. Amen. Have faith right. that whatever you pray to God is going to happen. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that's absolutely. what I did. Yeah. So you answered my next question early. So thank, thank you for that. So, and that's, that's key because, you know, for new folks that are listening, someone who has recently been diagnosed, that was your advice. So that was my question. So you answered that very well. So you definitely have to pray. You definitely sure. have to pray. Um, and I would piggyback off of what Brandon said. It's so important to surround yourself Absolutely. around positive yeah. people, people that are gonna motivate you. Um, because when you're doing these treatments and they're back to back to back, um, it could be very draining. Of course. It could be I very draining. Imagine. You get tired, um, not just only tired physically, right. but you get tired Absolutely. mentally. Yeah. And so there's just a lot. And so you have to find the little joys. Absolutely. You know, it could and be. And there are a lot of them. Right. Yeah. And so it's so important to surround yourself around positive, uplifting, funny people who can make you laugh. Absolutely. Because everything is so intense and so serious. That's true. Um, because like I, I, you know, I started to say after I did the radiation, I also did two reconstruction surgeries. Wow. And my most recent That's one amazing. was in August. Wow. In the middle in a of months COVID, ago. in the yeah. middle of a pandemic. Wow. So what was that experience like with the new procedures, the social distancing, um, just a lot of the changes that took place with you having to go in to have such a major important surgery during that time? What was that like during COVID? 
It's very different. Yeah. When I had the first reconstruction surgery, it was in February, and I was able to have my mother and my aunt in the waiting room, mm -hmm. um, in the prep room with me before going into the surgery. During COVID in August, I was only, I was only the only person who can go. Okay. Yep. My father literally dropped me at the front door. Mm. He had to kind of strong arm his yeah. way yeah. as much as he could in the hospital. But there was a certain point where they were like, we're no, sorry, just, sir. Yeah. You're going to have to kiss your daughter. And she's going to have to go upstairs to the surgery room by herself. And that's very intimidating. Very. I mean, anyone who's had very. surgery or e even an in and out procedure, you know, you always want to know that you have someone who's there waiting for you or if you're unable to answer questions or sign documents. Yeah. And so it was literally, I had tubes connected to me and I'm signing documents. Oh, wow. Which I really just think that's very unfair. Yeah, for but sure. I but I understood. Given the changes uh, yes. in the time that we live in. Yeah. So that's, the diff that's one of the major differences of pre-COVID and um, right. COVID. Right, right. No, thank you for that. You're, you're definitely a warrior. I'm, I'm drawing nothing but fighter energy from you, so I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, are there any hotlines or support groups that someone who is in a situation who have been early diagnosed, someone like yourself during COVID who may not have the support that they need, are there any su support groups or hotlines that they may be able to reach out to? There are several, actually. American Breast um, Society, Breast Cancer Society. Um, you Actually, one of the things that I found helpful for myself mm -hmm. was using this platform of Facebook. Yeah. And I went on there and just Googled breast cancer survivors support groups. And it was so nice because even up to today they were cheering me on That's they awesome. knew that i was going to be here yes. and they were like you know you you know stand on our shoulders tonight I love it. we I'm got so here you for it. um so definitely even just something as simple as facebook um i've been so fortunate to also align myself with organization organizations such as black girl health Awesome. Um, which is great because they're a wealth of information, and that's not needed. only about um, breast cancer, but just a wide range of uh, information right. for, black, for black girls. And that's so needed. Um, so for any of the viewers that are listening or any of the folks that are in the audience, tell everybody how they can reach out to you. What are your social media handles? You know, just in case someone wants to reach out to you that may need to talk. Sure. Um, they can follow me on Facebook. My Facebook address is just simply my name, okay. Jill, J-I-L-L, Sturge, okay. S-T-U-R-G-E, no spaces all together. And Instagram is J-I-L-L underscore S-T-U-R-G-E. I keep it very simple. simple. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show. We are so glad to have you guys. You guys give it up for Miss Jill Sturge. Yeah. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break, guys. We'll be back shortly. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Ball talk, fashion walk, and mall supernova. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Ball talk, fashion walk, and mall supernova. Anything less is unacceptable.
Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk in, mall, super new. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk in, mall, super new. Anything less is unacceptable.
Welcome back to the Shelly Roy Show, guys. My next guest is a R&B musician, singer, writer, and composer. He's also the lead singer of his band, Still Familiar, guys. You guys help me welcome Mr. Steve Roy. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the show. Hey, welcome. What's up? What's up? Welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for, for having sure. me. For sure. I know you don't do a lot of interviews, so we are honored right. to have you here at the Shelly Roy Show. Mm -hmm. So for myself, the audience, and the viewers, mm -hmm. give us an idea of where you're from, where you grew up. Um, I'm from Virginia, from Alexandria, Virginia. From, okay. So Another Alexandria. Y'all deep, y'all deep up in here. I'm, <laughs> I'm right. telling you. I grew up down, grew, grew up in Virginia, down Route One. My family, my father's side is from Virginia. My mother's side is from the city. Okay. Um, um, three sisters. They were, you know. Older, they're all older than me and get on my nerves, but I love them. They're yeah, not. you can't do nothing without the women. So, Very influential in your life. So. Little big brother. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So the funny thing is, um, when I posted the flyer and everyone saw that you were going to become a guest, mm -hmm. a lot of people were asking me, were we related? So, right, right. Yeah, so, <laughs> right. so, so, so Roy's that. are in the house. Right, right. <laughs> Roy's are in the house. I got it. Sure. I got it. Um, so you have an amazing voice, and for those of you. you guys who haven't um, heard his voice, we have some of his new music that he's working on, but mm -hmm. what age did you start singing, and what made you want to sing? Uh, my sisters actually made, made me want to sing. Okay. Um, I know I could not sing. It's, really? No. So I'm telling <laughs> Telling my age a little bit outside the grace, but you remember the little recorders you had to press the two buttons right. and record? And, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So I used to, they used to record themselves singing, and wow. I would come over there and try to jump in, and they would chase me around the house and be like, shut up. So, oh my God. Um, it took a while for me to keep on, keep on. Uh, maybe, probably at around 17. Really? Yeah. I would have thought earlier, right, I, guys? I would have thought earlier. No, about 17, I. I you know, people will say, oh, you got a nice voice. You got a nice voice. You should try to sing. But yeah. I was such a clown. I wanted to joke. <laughs> you tried. I don't tried. To be a comedian, but I'm like, let me try. <laughs> so uh, it kind of worked out later on. I kind of got, I didn't get serious about it until late 20s. I didn't really do much. That's good. Mm. I'm shocked. That's... I would. I mean, you have a very nice voice. I would have thought Thanks. you started at you know, a younger age, maybe singing in church, you know, the typical, that's no. actually what I thought you were going to no say. No church, <laughs> uh, no church, a rough uh, upbringing, and it was not due to lack of anything at home. I grew up in a great home, okay. mother and father together Okay, that's for a hundred years, but I just chose to be, use my intelligence in the wrong way. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, we all go through those various yeah. points at times. So. For me, it, it, it took a toll yeah. for the worst and took some years off of my life. And then uh, I decided to grow up and be a man. And well, thank God you got it. Yeah, some, I got it. Some men still trying to grow up. I got up. it late, but I got it. Though, yeah, girl. that's that's important. Definitely. Some men never grow up. Yeah, so true. That's important that, that you got that. So, yeah. yeah. So, what was the first instrument that you've ever played, and do you have a favorite instrument? Um, the actually, I think the only thing that I've ever tried to pick up was the drums, okay. and I liked it. But okay. It was a lot of energy, though. So <laughs> shout out to all the drummers. Yes. Like, I like you. Yes. I can't do this. Cause your drummer be going. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> But I was like, no, nah, I don't think I want to do that for like an hour or two every night. No. Nah, yeah. Let me try to sing something. <laughs> See, so after my voice turned from like a little girl's voice, like my dad used to call the house and I answer the phone and he'd be like, Tasha? I'm like, nah, man, come on. <laughs> he'd hang up and say, put some bass in your voice. He called back and said, hello. So I think oh, it stuck with so me after that. practice. He, yeah. Once it got, you know, to be my regular voice, I'm like, all right, this is what I'm working with. Let me try to use this right here. I get it, and it's it's working for you. It, it's funny because I know. Um, <laughs> give it up for him, guys. Give it up for him for sure. Definitely. Um, it's funny you say that with the whole voice thing and getting used to your voice. Because I mm -hmm. remember when I was growing up, I used to think, at a young age, as a female, I used to have a deep voice, 
and I couldn't stand the way that I sound <laughs> on the phone. But now it's like, okay, I'm in love with my voice. I have Absolutely. a very soft voice. But mm. coming up, I, I didn't like the sound of my voice. I didn't like to talk on the phone or any of that. Yeah, that was definitely me. Yeah, yeah. so no, I, I can definitely relate for sure. Um, so are you working on any new music? Um, yes, so uh, of course I'm in still a part of Still Familiar yes. and we are a go-go band, but uh, Jeff, my drummer, has a, a record label called New Level Entertainment. Ah, okay. He just released his first album and I wrote for some folks on the album and I have three songs on the album as well. And, nice. And as well as that, for Still Familiar, we're recording an album now that we're halfway through that I write for the band, myself. That's and I awesome. think we may have one cover. Oh, uh, we're Wishing on the Star, Will Down, and I sing that. It's nice. one cover song. I love Will Downing. And then I have my own project that I'm working on at the same Good time. Good for you, and but you it's should. All R&B, it's, uh, you'll feel like country feel, you'll yeah. feel everything. Um, it's different, it's mm -hmm. music. If they listen to it, I snuck in the congas and I okay. snuck in. So okay. I, the go go was there, but it's music. Very faint. Right? Okay. It's faint. Okay. I love so it. before we go to your new music, because I know you provided us some music that you're working on. So before we I play did. that, mm -hmm. um, with Still Familiar, how is that transitioning going? Because I know it's also difficult having your own band, it you is. know, working with different personalities, you know, going through, you know, different band members and things of that nature. How have you been able to master that and be successful with it? I know that was a loaded question. No, that's fine. I will be completely honest. I don't. I didn't really know that I mastered it until like just now. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's rough. Like, oh man, like you said it though. You yeah. have to deal with 12 yes. people. You have to deal with 12 attitudes, 12 maybe people had bad days. Yeah. Some people want to joke around all day like me yeah. and people might not be <laughs> up for it. So you got to kind of gauge folks. And um, right now, I, I believe I'm comfortable saying this is the best unit that I've ever been a part of. I mean, even when Donnell was there, it's uh, it, it's no problems in that. Like, I, I can comfortably say and that. And that's unheard of. It's definitely unheard <laughs> of, because that's what happens to groups. There's internal problems, yeah. and then there's no more group. Or, right. But this band of brothers and a sister, as I call it. I love it. it. Uh, is like amazing. I love it. Man, it's all I'm about not the just saying too, that. Yeah, definitely. The young lady, Kendra, she, she was with me when I was with Sato, and I was there for about eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. And she was amazing then, but she didn't let go like she let go now. Ah. So she's there and she's letting go. So I've seen her growth, and it's that's amazing that I'm able to play with guys that have been doing it for 30, right. 35 years. Mm hmm. So I guess their patience has mellowed, you know, they're kind of here That's now good. too. So it's just, uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing group of people. That's good. It says a lot about you as well. It says that you're a good leader also, so. Definitely, I definitely That's, try to be That's sure. really good. Thank um, you. So we're gonna play Steve's most recent music that he's working on. Can we play his song? Yeah, it's called Still. Still. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm. Country undertone. Okay. Baby 
For me as well, it's about the words. So, mm -hmm. what is that song about? What was the mindset? What space were you in to write that song? So, uh, don't write. I just, they played the track. Okay. And I just went in and whatever nice. was on yep. my mind or my heart at the time. Yeah. That's. Uh, I like it. That's what came That's up. That's real music. But it's also what I, it's what I do too, mm -hmm. so it's kind of easy. Like yeah. when I think, I like to drive. Mm -hmm. So when I'm saying, I'm just flying down the overroad with one hand on my wheel, wishing I clear yeah. my mind, but I feel you still, you know? Yeah. Wishing that this heart of mine, like a Chevy was made of steel, yeah. meaning I wish I That's didn't really care, yeah. I didn't, but it doesn't work like that because I still feel you. So. That's what came out. That's and, deep. Uh, that was it. it just, but I liked it though. So we stuck I liked with it. it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it shows. Yeah. yeah. Give it up, you guys. You Thanks, give it up. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so with you being a musician, writer, composer, so what's next for you guys? Will you be in any plays, any movies? What's what's next for Steve? <laughs> um, funny you said that. But uh, uh, yeah, I definitely <laughs> plan on doing the most I have ever done, like in this upcoming, the months, the year, I think if anything we've all learned, like uh, with this idle time that yes. we've had. Gotta be innovative, creative. I Man, you have to, and you have to enjoy what you have when you have it. You have yes. to embrace your talent. You have to, if you feel like you want to start a business, you have to take that leap. You can't be scared because with this, it's just, you don't know, That's literally, true. you don't know from day what's to day next? what's going to happen, That's what's true. next. So I'm going to insert, I'm, I'm, you might see me everywhere. Like you said, on the stage plays, Still so you're staying open to I'm it. Open to it. And Good. I've talked, I've uh, spoken, you know, to people about it, and I'm, I'm on the move. With That's it. great. That's it. I love it. Look forward to seeing you in some, <laughs> um, <laughs> some, some films and some, some movies. Um, so, what advice would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur and or artist, if you will, since you're a musician? Sure. Um, I would just say. 
even though we have kind of faced with a lot of and it's a lot in this area unfortunately mm -hmm. but it's um a lot of negative you know it's just a lot of negative energy mm -hmm. that's why it's that's, a, that's why alignment is, is important <laughs> lack of, and, yeah. and uh i don't really look for anyone to help me do anything mm -hmm. to hand me anything Amen. I'm going to wake it. up and I'm going to go get go it. Go get it. Yeah. yeah. Go get it, guys. Go get it. Go get it. So. Well, that's my advice. Go, Go get, get it. it. No, no, I love it. it. You, you have to seize the opportunity. You, you have to, you know, have that entrepreneur mindset, that winning attitude. You do. And you definitely have to believe in mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. because, you know, there's going to be naysayers. And, you know, like we spoke of earlier, everybody doesn't see your vision. So you, you have to first believe in yourself. Absolutely. So that's, that's definitely first and foremost. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so my last question, you know, since we're coming up on this big election year, mm -hmm. um, not getting too political, but what advice would you give to young voters and those voters who are uncertain about voting? Um, again, there is uh, a lot of negative. No, I'm just <laughs> seriously. Um, no, uh, I hear the term the lesser of two evils a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I don't yeah. really... Uh, think that you should just go with the less of two evils. I right. don't believe in that. Um, I don't believe that you should say, hey, people don't like this person. People more so like this person, so I'm going to go with the people say. Mm -hmm. like, I think you should sit with yourself and you should ask yourself, mm -hmm. you know, why am I voting for this person? Absolutely. Like, why, I agree. Like, why am I really voting for this person? Am yeah. I... Because in everyday life, like going to work into the office, I don't want to go. Yeah. <laughs> right? I may not like this person that I work for. Right. But I'm going to work, though. Right. Like, I have to go to work. Absolutely. I'm not going to say, you know what? Nah, I forget this person. I'm going to go over here because I don't really like them. Right. So you just have to sit with yourself and be prepared. When somebody asks you, hey, why'd you vote for Biden? Yeah. Why would you vote Trump? Have an answer, yeah. not just because That's so true. I don't like this person. Right. I I just don't agree with that. Don't just take the hey, it's the lesser of two evils. No, sit yeah. with yourself. Listen, people gonna judge you. Absolutely, no matter what. No matter what you do, mm -hmm. just make a decision and be able to face someone and answer them like wholeheartedly and believe in your answer when someone asks you yeah. why did you vote biden yeah stand firm why did you it. yeah stand firm on your answer that's all yeah no i agree mm -hmm. well thank you so much for coming to the show yeah, we are welcome, so glad though. to have you guys um and you guys have been an amazing audience Absolutely. thank you so <laughs> a beautiful one. you have a beautiful one. You guys, this energy was amazing. You guys have got to be the best audience ever. <laughs> yeah, they do, they do. Really, really. Energy, energy is everything. So I want to thank you to Miss Jill Sturge. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brandon Woolen. Thank you so much. And Mr. Steve Roy, thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks for having me. You guys, tune in next week for the Shelly Roy Show. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much. It's been real hard on us I've done some things you 
done some things and we repair our trust. And we've had our ups and downs, but still we hang on top. That's why I feel we ain't had enough. So whenever we're beefing, I might be gone, I ain't leaving. I just need a place to breathe in, yeah. But somehow it brings it right here. Right here, like I've been open wrong, one hand on my breath. It's like I try to clean my mind, but I feel you still. Yeah. I'm sitting at the front of my mind like a ship that was made of steel. It's like I try to clean my mind. Feelings, but somehow they won. Swung this thing around, and now you're his shotgun. Unspoken words, oh yes.